Hey folks, it's Ben from Explorinate again, and we are back with episode two of this tutorial Let's Play series of Remnants of the Precursors. Okay, so in the first episode, I showed how to set up a game and some of the options, and we talked through some of the basic, some of the basic game mechanics with regards to uh, how the population and production works, and um, also how to send our scouts and colony ships out to explore the the stars around us. Now, what we need to do next is we need to have a think about where the enemy is likely to be. Since we're on, we, we've got nine AI opponents on this starfield map, we were very fortunate in starting on the edge of the galaxy. I say fortunate, it's a double-edged sword. The reason being is because it's whilst we don't have to worry about anybody coming at us from you know this whole half of the of the galaxy we also can't expand in that direction so uh, it's possible that we may run into the ro a roadblock or two in the form of a potentially hostile uh, artificial intelligence player so let's uh, we, we need to think about which way we want to expand now these yellow stars have a good chance of having uh, Terran um, planets on and subterran planets. But this basically means that they will have a, a large maximum population uh, that we can that we can use to grow our pops. And the larger the planets, the more production we can get because the more the, the larger the more po population that we have, the more factories we can control, and then the more great stuff like ships and research we can we can pr produce. So. We want to try and plot our trajectory across the map. Now that will obviously, it will obviously uh, make a big difference who we come across in this game. Uh, so if we if we bump into a race that's going to be potentially hostile, like the Mercians or the Clackons, we might have to think a little bit more carefully about where we're going to go. So just looking at the star field around us, I think. We want to be we we're gonna keep pushing out in all directions until we see until we bump into an AI essentially, but this would be a good direction to go because there's a lot of orange stars here and orange stars have a fair good chance of of containing a decent planet. Uh, the blues, they don't have much that people can live on or that uh, our our Alkari can live on. However, they often have um, mineral rich planets which are absolutely excellent in this game. And once you've got the technology to be able to colonize them, they can really turn into big production powerhouses later in the game. So that it's absolutely essential that we, we try to find some mineral rich or very rich planets. They give um, a, a, a times two and a times three uh, production bonus respectively. So they can, they can be developed very, very quickly uh, once, that, once you've got the relative techs that can help you colonize them. Okay, so I'm going to move on to turn three. And you'll see that our ships are getting closer and closer. We don't have to do anything at the moment. Really, we're just building populations and we're building factories. You'll notice since the last turn, we're now building 3.5 factories a year. That That's because we've got more factories and we've got more population, which are creating a, a net, um, an increase of net production. So each turn that we, we go through, we'll, we'll get more production each turn. We'll be able to build more factories. Okay, so um, we've got a we've got a dialogue here telling us that we our scouts have explored a new star system. Uh, it's called Satake. So basically, as you as you explore each new system, you'll note you'll uh, the star map will be updated with a with a name, and that's generated by your faction. So each of the different alien races has their own naming system, and they're all completely different. So uh, you you will essentially name these planet these stars. And if an alien race then comes and takes one, they will replace the name with their name. So if they colonize one of these planets before we get chance, they will they will get chance to rename it as they like. So this planet is a dead planet, size 35, and it's a hostile environment. What that means is we can't colonize that yet. We've also discovered Endo, which is a classic, uh, uh, an ocean planet at 65 size. That is going to be good for colonizing. Unfortunately we're going to have to move our colony ship over to this planet now. So it was a real gamble, unfortunately, sending it over to Sataki. And Endo was really where we wanted to go, but we weren't to know that really. So I'm going to move uh, the colony ship over and let's carry on scouting. 
I think we're going to scout up to this purple star here, the neutron star. Uh, so the neutron stars are rare and offer the greatest chance of finding rich planets. So this is really what we want. We hopefully we'll find a rich planet here. That would be great if we did. <clears throat> so we've got four years, which is our estimated time of arrival to Endo from Sataki for our colony ship. So we've got a bit of a slow start, I'm afraid, on this game because uh, really I wanted to be getting this planet up and running immediately. But one of the bone, one of the benefits of this is that we actually get more chance now to build more factories in in Altair whereas before I would immediately start shuttling population over over to my second colony let's let's go to the next turn and our scouts are still traveling there's nothing we can do so let's just keep rolling the turn on <clears throat> now scouts explore a new star system again we've got another size 35 dead planet however this one has rich resources Output from industry has doubled. So this is a great planet. It's absolutely no use to us right now. But uh, once we are able to colonize this, once we've got the uh, the uh, the technology that allows you to colonize dead planets, that will be an excellent planet. And I'm glad that it's close to our to our home uh, our home system. So we can now select the scout and we can send him to this one here, uh, this unexplored yellow star. And we'll go to the next turn. Wow, this really is tough. So, uh, Sano is a Inferno size 20. Again, this is something that we can't colonize yet. So, we're, we've really had a bit of a rough start, I'm afraid, on this one. We might end up, unless, unless this specific uh, star system contains... If this star system doesn't contain a habitable planet, we're going to have to start researching some technology in order to be able to uh, make the leap out into these stars this going towards the center of the map so let's fingers crossed hope that we can actually find something there next uh in the next turn or well, next couple of turns ah hail to you spire king sharpclaw of the alkari sovereignty we of the aviari sovereignty extend cultural greetings and look forward to honorable dealings with your kind okay so it looks like the uh the game has has uh, duplicated an Alkari faction, and they're they're called the Aviari. So we are right next to some of our racial brethren. Our colonists are orbiting Endo, an uncolonized system. Okay, so our colony ships hit Endo now, and we're going to build a new colony here. And here's some of the new the new graphics and music. In the year three hundred six, the Alkari sovereignty forms a new colony, and yeah, let's call it Endo. A new world bears our banner, but it grows at an inhibited rate. Sending a transport to the colony will enable it to grow at a much swifter rate. Okay, so this is um, this is kind of like some... This is the uh, the advisors, which are giving you a hint on how to quickly grow your colonies. And the way that we do that is we start ferrying our population from Alkari over to Endo. Because at the moment, we've only got two, two population out of a maximum of 65. In order for this... Uh, colony to grow its population at the at the most optimal rate we need to get it up to half of this so that's about 30 32 so really what we want to do now is immediately start sending excuse me let's say we want to immediately start sending population from altair to endo now because uh, altair will grow quickest at about 50 uh, we want to send 17 pop and we're going to send those immediately so we set the slider here, set it to 17. It tells us how long it's going to travel to Endo, which is three years. And then we click on uh, Send Transports. The, the way that this uh, box works is it shows you this, the planet that you're sending from and the planet system you're sending to with the relative populations and the size. And uh, so this enables you at a glance to, to quickly see which planets that you need to send from, uh, from and to. So let's click send transports. Now, because we've done that, we've, uh, we're have we starting to get a, li a little bit less production. So we just need to adjust our e ecology slider just to keep ourselves in the green there. We've got an alert. Uh, the Aviari ships have been spotted trespassing near our colony in the endo system. Right, so we've got um, we've got this green this green scout ship. Uh, they've, they've called it Foxbat. Now, this is the uh, this is the rival Alkari clan. 
and uh, they're currently hovering over our system. That's no problem. They they have no guns on this ship, so it can't do anything. I'm looking forward to see what our scouts find in this system here, because hopefully it's a colonizable planet, and that will enable us to leapfrog over to these systems here. At this point, we need to start thinking a little bit more about um, playing with the sliders here to actually readjust uh, where we're putting our production into. At the moment, we just really want to be making sure that Endo has enough population and uh, maximizing the factories on both planets. I'm not even going to touch research for a few turns. As you can see now, uh, the transports are en route to Endo. Uh, in, this, in this little box here on the right, it shows you how many transports you've got, and each transport uh, carries one million troops, or one million colonists, sorry, and uh, it tells you the ETA. So if you can see that the icon for these ships is different, it's, it's a little uh, kind of oblong thing. So, next turn. No, before this turn, I think, we need to get to 30, around 32 population for this to start really growing fast. So I'm probably going to send another transport from Altair and we're going to send three and then we'll we just click on Endo there and then click on send transports. Turn 10. Okay, so we found an ultra rich planet. This is a great planet to have close to our to our home world. I'm really, really happy about this. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's an irradiated planet, which is the most difficult uh, con uh, planet to settle uh, in, early in the game. We need a relatively high technology to be able to settle that planet so that we've got no hope of getting that for a little while at least until we start researching or or taking some tech tech from our uh, our opponents so this scout can now be sent somewhere else although we are out of range of its even its extended fuel cells here and we can't go anywhere else so i'm just going to leave him there for the time being i'd actually use him as an early warning system just in case another another ai faction comes and scouts this planet because the ai will also see this as a as an exceptionally good planet and altair is going to send just another couple of transports and next turn and uh, no this is great so we've actually found a, a size 95 terran planet um designated sato this is great so now that we've got endo what we want to do is we can use this to reach Sato. This is now within three light years. If you can just see here, if we click on Endo, yeah, we're, it's two point seven light years. This is indicated by this is indicated by the uh, the fuel fuel cell range indicator here. But sometimes it's, it's it's useful to be able to just to look at these and to find out exactly where they are, how the, how far away they are. So Endo's now got nineteen population. We've got three on the way, five on the way altogether. That's going to take us up to 24. So we want to send a few more from, from Altair and try and get it up to its 50% point as quickly as possible. I'm going to send this scout ship over here. Now, because Sato is a good planet and we really want to take that, there might be some cause to, or there might be a good reason for us to create some, some kind of military ship just so we can sit that on Sato because we have got another Alkari faction somewhere near us and it's possible that they've scouted it already in which case we don't want to lose this planet if we lose this planet we're in big trouble so I'm going to send more some more uh, transports out from Altair to Endo I don't think we'll need to do this for much longer actually from one, there's no point in building any more population than we can than we can operate factories for so really i kind of want to keep sending population from altair until uh we've we've reached around 100 factories at that point then we can start growing the population and uh, and then i'm going to quickly max out the factories as fast as i can then build a colony ship and the colony ship's going to settle on sato So we've got 53 population and 83 two factories. So let's send some more some more pops out. Send three this time. And our forces met a hostile Aviari fleet. Ship combat in an unexplored system. Okay, so they've actually got a military ship here. And I can tell because the, the icon here has the little retro burners. Uh, also, the little um, 
jet jet fuel burners on the back so we can tell this is a military ship uh they've called it sparrow hawk and there's three of them just to our one scout <clears throat> so this is the tactical combat screen as you can see it's quite small uh, it's five it's ten across by one two three four five six seven eight eight down so it's actually quite a small field but this is this plays to the strengths of the game really because the tactical combat actually works quite quickly so you just click where you want to move i can't i have no hope of winning this game uh this tactical battle uh, i'm just sort of demonstrating how it works but you have these asteroids which you can use to put a, a space in between you and your opponents um these are small ships that the, that the sparrow hawks are using or they are small ships um they likely have a weapon on them of some kind but i don't want to lose my scout so what i'm going to do is i'm going to retreat so if we hit the two key here <coughs> there we go so we've retreated and if we click on exit so uh, we, we we didn't get chance to scout this ship this system unfortunately so the aviari i think they're probably going to be maybe here i think that's where they started that's possible uh, i'm just going to turn on this so yeah th that's the only planet oh no we have this one here within six within six light years so these scouts mind you if they started here they wouldn't have been able to each reach endo because endo is 8.4 i think that they probably started either here yes it must be here i think this is where the aviari are that makes sense so we have immediately hit a bird shaped roadblock in our expansion plans uh because i'm now concerned about sato it might be wise for us just to build one ship and at the start we do get some we do get some default default ships so this gives us an opportunity to look at the design screen so here's the ship design screen it's much like it was in master of orion um, one except it's got just some really nice quality of life improvements let's look at the destroyer so uh the, the destroyer is is a basic ship design uh, it's a medium-sized ship and uh, it's it's equipped with some nuclear missiles and some lasers now the nuclear missiles are a very simple weapon type they're really quite weak they're, they're just this the two techs that you get at the start that allow you to fight the laser is very very weak it only does one to four damage and it has a range of one it's very small so on the larger ships you can load quite a lot of them on uh, and make multiple attacks per turn uh, but the, the the nuclear missile is the is just the basic bare bones missile that you get. Um, I'm at the moment I'm not going to show how to you know the best way to design a ship. Um, I'm going I'm just going to build these destroyers quickly, and the, because I, I don't have any technology to build anything better at the moment, and I think maybe if I just build a destroyer and place it over Sato, that should be able to fight off. Oh, mind you that we are the alkari and the alkari do really well with small ships hmm yeah maybe we can if we build some of these fighters i'm just gonna i'm just gonna send a few of them because i really don't want to i really don't want to um derail our factory uh snowballing effect so let's just take the ecology down we don't need to be growing pops yet and we'll just make sure that we're building yeah, let's build three so as you can see i'm just i'm just adjusting the slider and it's telling me three per year so this is this means that i'm going to be building three fighters a year now i'm going to i'm going to i want my sh uh, fighters to immediately start moving towards sato so that actually what i'm going to do is i'm going to set a rally point so underneath where the ship build queue is if you click set rally point and click on endo and you can see this purple line now indicates that there's a there's a rally point being uh, that's been set up so any ships now that we create in altair we can they will automatically fly straight to endo uh, meanwhile we're still building a few factories each turn i just want a few of these fighters and i think they were using three oh they've split the fleets now look they've got one fleet of one one fleet of two which seem to be moving so i'm going to build i'm going to have one more turn of these ships so i've just got an overwhelming force compared to what they have and now, uh, turn 16, I'm actually going to, I'm going to put my spending back into industry because we really want to start building up our factories as quickly as possible so we can get this colony ship out. 
next turn. Yeah, so now Endo has uh, we've we've actually hit forty one population. So now it's got some more population. We're going to start building factories a bit quicker. They're at a rate of two point five a year at the moment. Let's see where we are now. So our fighters are on the way to Endo. Hopefully we can get them to Sato in time. So uh, you know because if the Al if these Alkari imposters decide to send a colony ship down to Sato, we've got something we can fight it off with. And that's really important for our for our development because unfortunately we're kind of well we've got inferno and dead planets all around us and they're just no and an irradiated one they're just no use for us we can't colonize these yet so we have to get sato that's absolutely critical and i'm keen to see what's at this red star too okay so the fighters of the first three fighters have arrived let's move them to sato turn 19 and again, I'm just going to move these fighters over to Sato. So we've got six fighters sat there. That is only a that is a really small, pathetic amount of ships. However, it's enough to drive off a colony ship, or you know, uh, maybe an armed scout or two that the uh, that those fake Alkaris might send to us. So, uh, also now we can we can actually scout this uh, this red planet again. It it might be that the the uh, the other Alkari have left it. So let's let's send our scout back out and see what we can see. We're, okay, uh, Altair, our homeworld, we're almost hitting the point now where um, we've got twice as many factories as the population. So we've got 68 factories, uh, which means uh, 136. we want 136 factories to to max out the, what the population can control. So I'm going to leave it, I'm going to leave this on, I'm going to leave this on industry for the time being. But now might be a good turn to start putting a few research points into tech. Uh, it's important not to leave tech too long. So <clears throat> I'll put a few points into tech and you'll see that when I, I hit the next turn, it will trigger the first research choices uh, dialogue. <clears throat> so here we go. Here's our beautiful Alkari scientist asking us to select the next computer technology our researchers should focus on. Um, now, the way that the research works in Master of Orion and Remnants of the Precursors is that it's a randomized tech tree. <clears throat> the, the, uh, there's, a, there's a list of techs and there are 50, there are 50 tech levels which each have uh, they're split across six different branches. So let's just look at computer tech for an example. Now, computer technology... Uh, there'll be there will be a, somewhere around just between sort of 48 and 50 techs split over 50 levels and they're organized into groups of uh, five of tiers of five levels so deep space scanner i'm pretty sure is in the first five is in the first tech tier battle computer mark two will be in tier two <clears throat> so the level of the technology is important because the uh, each tech tree level or each tech tree branch gives you bonuses in certain ways so computers helps us with our espionage roles, which is really important for if we want to either steal technology from other races or if we want to try to uh, defend our own te technology from being stolen. So it gives us a choice. So we want to take Deep Space Scanner, which allows us to see incoming ships. Basically, it's, it's like a it's a scanner to detect enemy fleets or battle computers, which are something that we can we can add to our fighters and our 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 fleets in order to make them more effective in combat. Now, uh, this would be useful for us. The deep space scanner is also really useful. And I think I want this first because um, I'm not anticipating getting into any wars quite yet. So let's take the deep space scanner. Um, and construction tech, we are not get, being given a choice here. So we uh, improved industrial tech reduces factory construction costs to 9 billion credits each. So normally at the moment, for every 10 billion credits I spend in in industry uh, i'm getting one factory whereas once i've researched this tech i'll only spend nine so as you can see this makes it easier for you to develop your planets it's a really useful tech uh you i don't think you ever get a choice with force fields it's always class two, it's always class two deflector shields this absorbs more damage from attacks on your ship um planetology we've got the option between improved terraforming plus 10 and control baron now improved terraforming plus 10 Increases the population capacity of your planets by 10 million for a cost of 5 billion credits per million. So what this means is 
um, in a nutshell, we get more people onto our planets. It's a terraforming tech. So on our home planet, which has currently got a maximum of 100 uh, population, we can actually move it up to 110. And we have to spend a little bit of spending into planetology in order to upgrade it. Uh, that's really, really useful. And this other tech allows us to colonize barren planets, but we don't have any of those nearby. So I'm going to go straight for this one. It's also a relatively cheap tech. Propulsion technology is something that the Alkari have a special speciality in. So we actually get um, a bonus to any spending that we, we put into propulsion. This is one of the Alkari's racial bonuses. So we can either choose hydrogen fuel cells, which allow us to move four light years away instead of three from our colonies, or deuterium fuel cells, which allows us to move five light years. Um, Really now this is a choice. Do we do we do we need four or five light years? Well, I'm gonna go for this one because for the start it will move us into the next tech uh, tier. And being in the next tech tier tier is useful because it will allow us to unlock some of the more useful the more useful technologies in propulsion. Also, I think we are gonna hit a roadblock with those other Alkari. So let's go for the five light years. Uh we're gonna have to spend a bit more spending, but that's no problem. Uh, we get the choice between for weapons tech we get the choice between hand lasers and gatling lasers um now hand lasers are uh personal lasers that add five to your ground combat roles so if we want to fight in a ground battle and take a colony from someone or if we're forced to defend one of our colonies this will give us a plus five bonus which is really useful um alternatively we can take gatling laser which is an early weapons tech for our ships that will make our that will give us the option to have a little bit more bite or sting on our on our fleets uh i think i'm going to go with hand lasers anyway uh because it's such an easy tech for us to get okay so that was the that was the colony screen now we're only putting three research point in every turn so um really at the moment we want to be maxing out our population but i thought it was it's good to start getting your tech going fairly early if you can so i want to get at least some research points into this and we're we've now got some fighters sat at sato and we're waiting to see if we can if the alkari the the fake alkari <laughs> have moved from this from this planet here speaking of the uh the alkari i think the next thing we can do is if we go into the races screen okay so they're they are actually called the aviari i should probably call them by their by their real name it's it's a bit more polite and it's telling us that uh, we have no diplomatic treaty with them and no trade treaty well, this is good. What this means is that we are actually within. We, it's good and it's bad, but we're within range of them, um, of their colonies enough that we're able to actually trade with them. So, if we want now, we can engage in diplomacy with these guys, and also, probably more importantly at this point, we can start, we can start um, spying on them. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the video here, and in the next video, I'll dis I'm going to talk about this race, this race screen. And all the different uh, the different things that we can do from here, because this is a really really important screen. And as we go into this game, we're going to be spending more and more time on this. But I think I'm going to end the episode here because we're getting close to a half an hour. So, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you're enjoying the the series, and I hope you're finding it useful. Uh, please drop any comments into into, into YouTube afterwards. Um, like and thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks, guys. I'll see you soon.